Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. I am Mary with Mary Greeley News. Today is June 17th, 2023. We have a live view of Old Faithful. I want to give a special shout out to those of you that have joined me on Patreon and helped support my work. I'm also on Twitter. I post a lot of stuff on Twitter. So you might want to follow me there. Yeah, it's the uh, three-day weekend. It's not a national holiday, but 41 states celebrate um, Juneteenth, I guess it's called. Um, and there is the uh, drills, the military drills with the National Guard and reservists going on. That will continue for two weeks. There's been a lot of problems going on with the Internet. Um, the banking systems were over week phones, things like that. Yeah, we're being hacked, uh, getting closer and closer to war. So it's kind of a good timing that the uh, reservists and the National Guard are just now starting their two weeks of training. A lot of videos on Twitter. I'm going to show you a couple of them. Well, wish me luck. It took me like two hours to get this whole fucking thing changed chain down yet. It's a lot. I was hoping to get hummers like everyone else, but nope, I got a trailer and a forklift. Some of the notes that I wrote about these videos, uh, there was a comment about using the public highway to transport um, the M109 howitzer, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Um, the uh, 109 is an American 155 millimeter turnit self-propelled howitzer, first introduced in the early 1960s. Um, they did some upgrades to it back in 2016. Um, it can now fire hyper velocity projectiles and it's used for, um, defense. It will shoot down drones, originally designed for uh, use by the U.S. Navy electromagnetic railguns. They found that they sufficiently increased the gun's range. The Army is also looking into using the M109 um, Paulden firing the HVP for ballistic missile defense. As traditional mis missiles, interceptors are expensive. Uh, the gun base missile defense used for point defense would be would use artillery at a much lower cost and it goes on about how far it can fire about uh, 58 miles 93 kilometers they did a test in September of 2021 uh, HBP fired from an army paladin howitzer successfully inter intercepted a BQM-167 target drone, simulating a cruise missile. They're even doing drills here in Wyoming. I'll show you that in a second. There was another post saying people forget the original purpose of the interstate highway system was to facilitate the rapid movement of troops and materials. Public use of the road roadways are secondary. So I was thinking maybe the roads that have all the potholes, they're not going to be used for the military movement. Yeah, we can continue planting trees in those potholes. They have actors that are taking part in this drill. Up over here, they got a picture of a woman that supposedly has got a uh, compound fracture. But down here it says she was one of the actors who played roles in emergency exercises Tuesday involving many local state uh, local and state agencies, including the Campbell County Fire Department, Campbell County Sheriff's Office, Campbell County Emergency Management, Campbell County Health, Campbell County Public Health, the Salvation Army, and Civil Air Patrol, just to name a few. It was part of the larger exercise by the Wyoming National Guard titled, um, Vigilant Guard 23-3, which took place in Campbell, uh, Crook, Johnson, 
uh, Laramie, uh, Naroma, Park, Platte, Sheridan, and West Western counties this week. So going back to Yellowstone, yeah, they had a magnitude 2.8 earthquake today, and they actually did not fudge about the magnitude of it. And it's an interesting area where that earthquake occurred. So many of you that have been following me through the years will remember that when they had their last major eruption, a major, not a small eruption that have occurred since then, uh, Yellowstone had an unzipping, multiple eruptions doing a counterclockwise rotation, starting up at the Madison River area and then uh, continuing down to Heart Lake. Once it reached Heart Lake, the two resurgent domes collapsed at the same time. Well, today's earthquake was a magnitude 2.8. Like I said, they didn't fudge about it. And it's interesting. It's probably uh, got to do with the Buffalo Fork Fault. And what's interesting about this fault is that uh, the northern end has older earthquakes. And as you get down south, um, yeah, the newer the earthquakes are occurring. And this is where that magnitude 2.8 occurred. Faults in this area haven't had very much research done. The last paper I could find was in 1998, stating that very little research has been done, um, mostly because it's in such a remote area. So I drew out some of the other faults. We got the Huckleberry Mountain Fault, Huckleberry Ridge. Um, let's see, and it goes, this one goes all the way up towards um, Heart Lake and Mount Sheridan, Factory Hill, which is an area of lots of geysers. And there's quite a few faults running through there also. But this one looks like it was along the Buffalo Fork Fault. So here we have the monitor for uh, West Thumb. And you can see how it brought up a lot of gases and things like that, hot water. Yeah, it shook for a little bit. Let's go to the seismic signature. Yeah, this is probably volcanic uh, tectonic earthquake, and I've talked about those recently. This is because of the uplift that's occurring there at Yellowstone. The ground's getting really brittle, and it doesn't bend like it would pushing up on the ground, the, the magma. So it doesn't bend anymore, and it's just cracking, popping. So that's why they call it volcanic um, tremors, volcanic tectonic earthquakes. Yeah, it's caused by the ground becoming very brittle. So let me close this out and I'll show you the other monitors and other earthquakes. Let's close this out. One of them had an earthquake right before, there it is, I see it, uh, Maple Creek right there and it's marked in red. Look at the magma, the line of melt. Oh my goodness, let's make that bigger. Okay. I don't know if they reported this one, but we'll go over here to where it started. Right about there. Let's go to the seismic signature. Yeah, um, slow moving tremor, which would be the one here at the bottom. It's marked in red, so the computer picked it up, sent a message to the geologist. And yeah, they didn't do anything about it. Let's go back here. You can watch this line of melt. More than likely what happened, a crack opened up uh, what they call a dike intrusion. So the magma came up through that crack and slowly rose up. Oops, I went off the line. And got thicker and thicker and started bringing up the heat. Started bringing up the gases. Look at that. Yeah, that's very significant. 1644 Universal Time, 1144 AM Central Daylight Time. This was about an hour before the magnitude 2.8. And then it settled down a little bit. Let's see what it's showing. Okay, we can still see the line of melt sort of in the pockets of um, hot rock and yeah, melted rock and gases. Not all rock melt at the same temperature. So let's go down here to this 2.8. And this is what it was showing when I pulled the files. 
Okay, and there's a couple more here. Let's see, we got one at 11.46. They only reported two earthquakes today, which was the magnitude 2.8. That was at 17.58. Like I said, that one I just showed you was about an hour before this 2.8. And then one at Hedgen Lake, a magnitude 1.2. Now this 2.8 was fairly shallow. It was only 3.8 miles in depth. No one said they felt it. Um, the service being such a remote location, yeah, no one probably felt it. Or they probably didn't have cell phone service. And then um, the 1.2, that was 7.9 um, miles below sea level. All earthquakes are measured from sea level. Let's take a look at that. No, nope, no one said they felt that earthquake. So let's go back to that one, which was at oh, 1146. You can see the gases. Let's take a look at the seismic signature. Harmonic tremors. Yep. Volcanic and harmonic tremors. And how it lasted quite a while. Look at that. That one comes in as at least a magnitude 2.43. It might be bigger because of the long seismic wave, but I really shortened it up. I put it, yeah, let's see, right there. So it could have been larger. And then we got another one. That's got a long P wave on it, um, 1103. That's the one at Hedge and Lake that they did report. They're saying that it's a magnitude 1.3, I believe. No, a magnitude 1.2. Let's check this out and see if it really is. Okay. No, I get a magnitude 1.90. So going to Google Earth, let's see where that one was at. Oh, it's in a remote location also. There is a road over here. Let me bring this back out. No, well, we do have a resort. I wonder if they felt it. See, we got the Madison River here. And just felt some light rattling, maybe. And what do we got? What do we got here? We got a couple little homes. But they did not bother to call it in. If they did feel it. And then there's another... Oh, uh, what is this? I don't know if there's homes. Looks like homes. And maybe a feedlot. Yeah, a feedlot. All right, let me close this out and I'll bring it up. Again, this is the monitor for Maple Creek. We got a small popping there. Um, 2101 Universal. So that would have been 421 yesterday. And we got another one at 2109. More popping. And like I said, they haven't reported any of these. Let's, let's see. Let's take a look at the seismic signature and see how big it is. These are small. Okay, this one was a 1.12. This one here was a magnitude 1.11 and then this one here oops one let's see it would have been probably oh go back a 1.11 also so going back to west thumb i wanted to take a look what was going on here tremors let's go to the seismic signature because this is the area that was shown. Was it the screaming last time? I don't remember. I have to go back and look at that video. Okay, let's take a look at this. What do we got up here? Yeah, okay. This would be the uh, volcanic tectonic tremors. And we got popping. Lots of popping going on. Like I said, the ground's really brittle. Look at that. Yeah, harmonic tremors. 
and this is what it was showing when I pulled the files. Let's go down here. Yep. One day it's going to erupt. Hopefully it's just a small eruption. I don't see any screaming though. Let's take a look at the western boundary. There's that one earthquake. Right there. Yep, look at that. I'm not surprised because I've shown possible dike intrusion in this area before. Okay, got a little pop in there. Right there. And, yeah, just more of the same. Hope everyone's prepared. Let's see, what do we got here? Not just for a volcanic tremor, but yeah, with all the stuff that's going on with um, the 17 <laughs> recordings of um, the corruption in Washington and accepting bribes from Ukraine and China. Yeah, they'll start a war before Biden is even coming close to impeachment or being charged with treason. All right, here we have Joseph Code. I put this on here because it was showing some activity before. You can see we got a line of melt there. Um, a little earthquake that showed up there. Two lines of melt and some heat. Like I said, all rock does not melt at the same temperature. And this is when that other activity was going on. Those three earthquakes. Yeah, you see the line of melt. I'll give you a link to this. This is USGS, US Quarterly Faults. And this is that um, Buffalo Fork Fault. Let me bring it over so you can see different stuff and what they mean. Um, yeah, we got some here by Heart Lake. I don't know why it's been acting up, but I can barely see it. And you click on the fault and it says Grand Teton. Um... Let's bring this down. It will show me more information when I click on it right there. And it'll take me over to this document, which you can do. Yeah, see, 1998 gives it a fault number. This is for the Huckleberry Ridge Tough region. Last revised in 1998. The only time they really do any research there at Yellowstone is when different um, universities or private people come into the area and spend their money. USGS um, saves the money for something else. I don't know. They definitely don't use it for the camera. Let me close this out and go to these yellow ones by Heart Lake. Let's see. I don't know why it's acting up. It was working earlier, but like I said, we're having problems with the internet. Now this is the East Mount Sheridan Fault. Again, 1998. Um, it says here, the Holocene Avalon Fan Deposits. Holocene means nowadays, since, since man was here. So whenever you, you see that, that is modern times. The fault has a higher slip rate of about 2.5 millimeters per year for the past uh, 13.5 thousand years. Because the faults cut across the caldera margin at a high angle, as seen in the map view, the southern half of the fault offset, the Lava Creek Tuff, but its trace is not easily identified. This part of the fault is shown to be uh, being mid to late um, quaternary. And some of the research was done way back in 1975. Now, they believe then that the faulting was related to ongoing extension, not caldera forming, because the faults cut across the caldera margin at a high angle. So I'll bring this out a little bit. Yeah, you can see how this one fault, um, let's see, it goes right across Yellowstone Lake. More information. Okay, that's all. only way I'm going to be able to read it. Eagle Bay Fault. Yeah, they do not even have uh, the faults drawn out that I can see for West Thumb. They do have this other one that's 
Let me close this. Uh, oh, that's the buffalo. Okay, the buffalo goes all the way up through the lake. Okay, buffalo fork fall. They do not even have the area of uplift drawn out. But they do have, is this the area? Yeah, this is the area um, where the trees died off um, that they found. If you remember those reports. Yeah, let's just click on whatever. Oh, Mirror Plateau Fault. So you can see that there. Close that. Um, unnamed faults, Burnt Raven Creek. I find it interesting. I don't know if you guys would. This one I know about. This is the uh, Elephant Back Fault system. Yeah, there's a lot of them through there. And then we got the Norris Canyon with, let's see, Hayden Valley, Roaring Mountain, Madison River. Oh, there's that fault that I gave it its, its own name, I think. East Gallatin Rees Creek Fault. Okay. That's the one I believe that I call the Grizzly Creek Fault because it's near uh, Grizzly Creek. Yep, I spend a lot of time doing research and trying to find out all the little itty bitty information like this uh, magnitude 2.8 i wanted to know exactly what fault it was close to so anyways what are your thoughts what do you think about these two weeks of drills see when it shows this here that little funny little thing it means the internet on their end wasn't working yeah, please put your comments down below. And once again, thank you very much for your support. Hugs and kisses to everybody. Um, please stay safe. Always be prepared. Like I said, uh, we got so much going on in the world. Um, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.